Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, one thing I'm curious about, if everyone could kind of post in the comments, I'm curious what other project cars you guys are working on. If it's just, you know, 3S platform, 3000 GT install, and kind of what stuff you guys have going on. Just curious who's checking out the videos. Um, so this is really just to kind of give you an overall status of where things are at. It's, it's funny with a build like this, it's, um, it's, it's funny, like you look at this and it looks like not much, much has changed because it kind of hasn't, but it's because there's a lot of kind of effort and detail that goes into um, the overall project. So all I wanted to do was take about five minutes and let you guys know where everything stands and kind of what's coming next. So this is where the main focus has been, which is um, I've really lowered kind of the mounting height. So if you look at a stock 3000 GT floorboard, which you'll see is there's kind of a, a floor pan in here that kind of levels out this area, but also raises it up um, to about this level. It's a decent gap. Um, and then there's also kind of rails that go across for the seat supports. Uh, the stock rails, you can see where they were positioned. So that's the holes at that point um, and the holes at that point. So you can see I slid my seat mounting back about four inches um, now, granted, those are the rail supports, the sliders kind of slide back a little bit more, but uh, my seat position is a lot farther back than you'll see um, in a stock uh, uh, car if you were just to kind of mount to the stock rails. Um, this is a 3 8 inch stick, uh, just bar, um, and then it's kind of, there's, there's steel at the midpoints here to kind of support it, so it's got no flex to it. Um, it is just secured to the floor pan, so I'm really making sure the floor plan is secured to the kind of side frame rail. So um, the reason I did that is just because the height I was trying to get at, uh, if I brought it all the way to the rails and attached it there, it would be up higher. As you can see, this one uh, is kind of down low there. Some of the other things I had to do, uh, these bolts here, they're welded on the backside. It was going to be a pain to kind of hold that still every time I was bolting in the seat. Um, so that was one thing I had to deal with. Um, and then also the harness. So I was able to use the stock seatbelt mounting point uh, for this side here. Um, but on this side, I had to actually make, um, I believe it's called like a harness mount stress plate. Uh, essentially what it is, it's this 3 8 inch plate, which is probably overkill, you probably do like eighth inch. Um, with a drill, you know, drill through it and then weld the nut to the back of that. And then I'm able to weld this entire plate to uh, the sheet metal here and thread in my harness at this point. Um, so I actually had to make these. Uh, I used the same exact plate um, for the submarine belt. Uh, so one thing with this, it probably would have been cleaner if I just did an eyeball uh, through the floor pan, but I didn't have one um, and I already kind of made these, so I just ended up welding this uh, to the floorboard here. So essentially this is what the submarine belt um, attaches to. Uh, the reason I couldn't just lay this flat and I had to stand it up on end is because the, the belt, now they do make uh, angled kind of belt connections, but the one I have on the core brew harness, it needs to kind of have a flat connection and be in the same orientation that the belt is when it comes up. Um, so that's on that front there. Um, since the last video, I've gotten the cage completely done. Still need to clean everything up. Got a lot of splatter you're kind of seeing, but uh, the plates are in there as best as I could get them uh, welded in, so the entire entire cage is in as well. So that's really where everything stands right now at the moment. Uh, next steps is basically to clean everything. Uh, and that's one of the other things. I've tried my best to keep everything kind of clean as possible kind of around the car. Just helps psychologically, frankly, if you're trying to, you know, work on everything, you're not tripping over everything. Um, everything's in my basement, but uh, it's, it's get everything as clean as possible and as smooth as possible so that I can prime everything. So essentially that's the plan is to get all very, very clean, prime everything so I'm not dealing with any more kind of surface rust issues. And I can still do some minor fabrication or welding here and there and just spot prime those areas immediately after I do that little project but I kind of want to get this whole shell and the cage primed. Um, the cage itself will get painted silver, same color as the car, but it'll have a nice contrast because the whole interior is going to be black. Um, so I've already kind of tested the seats and the harnesses and all of that's looking good. So now the seats are laying in the basement and really I can just focus on getting the whole shell clean 
on top, underside of the floor plan, uh, wire, wheel, everything, um, and get this ready for paint. So I would think the next video you're probably going to see is uh, mostly on priming the car, showing you what products I'm using and things like that. Um, again, all for the first time, so do plenty of research. Don't just uh, rely on this video alone. So thanks so much for watching, and again, as a reminder, please post in the comments what kind of, or whatever projects you guys have going on. Uh, always curious to see what, uh, what else is out there. Thanks so, so much for watching. Please hit the like and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.